Now, Will, I think this is probably more a nice nerdy one for you because I didn't get overly excited about it. But um, the uh, share your Wi-Fi by using a QR code. So you can now share your Wi-Fi password with multiple people um, simultaneously by creating a QR code. So a safe way of being able to connect to the same Wi-Fi network. Um, now, Will, yeah. do you have any anything, you know, nerdy about oh, that? It's just a really good... It's just a really good iteration, yes. right? Um, long gone are the days of like having to tell someone your password. Exactly. You might still have to do that with people that use Android. Uh, for now. Um, that but it's, it's actually meant to it's benefit usable. with Android users. That Everyone. was a note that I did write go. down. Because obviously we've seen the like Apple to Apple device, yep. share your Wi-Fi. Yep. That's a really good feature. The problem with it as well is that you can't do that to multiple devices mm -hmm. at yeah. the same time. So you can only do it to one person. And if the request has been sent from one person and it's not been received, then it doesn't do it again. And that's something hard to trigger. QR codes, you know, yeah. pretty good. Plus, um, if you change the password, it will refresh the exactly. QR code. So it's quite a bit of security in there, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Again, just another handy little thing to have. Not necessarily something everyone will use, but it maybe in a business sense can be quite handy as well. Yeah, heaps. Yeah. Moving on to... A bit of iPad OS, yeah. Um, Smart Script. Now we touched on that briefly in the WWDC video. Sure. Um, now, obviously, I haven't used it a lot with my iPad because I don't tend to write with my pencil a lot. I'm not sure if you do, Nico. I've updated my iPad to iPad OS 18, mm -hmm. and I do have a pencil too. Yep. So uh, this feature is available to me. I've yet to train it. I mean, there's so many th other things we've been sort of consumed yeah, by, Yeah, yeah, but, but um, it's, as it reads, it says that it will use on-device machine learning yep. and to try and model your handwriting. So it'll s sort of understand what your handwriting is supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. And then as you kind of build speed um, and say you're a bit loose on the, on the letters, then it'll tidy them up. Um, yep. If you're a, a sort of pencil first iPad user, which I know some people are, um, I think this will be a, an, an interesting one, so especially for those who uh, feel like they get into the flow yeah. of work faster writing rather than typing. Mm -hmm. Then again, it'll be it'll be one of those features. And uh, not only that, I, I believe it also can uh, read your that writing mm -hmm. and then transcribe it to uh, to, 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 like text. so that so that it could um to. Uh, <laughs> we call it voice, so we could oh, yeah. so we could speak it out. But yes, dictation. You, dictation <laughs> my goodness, so we could speak it out. Um, and then also, yeah, copy and paste as well. So for the, for those uh, pencil first users, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say, you know, in, in some cases, uh, a, a minor spec bump. This one is yeah, huge feature. Yeah. Um, another one I just stumbled across the other day was uh, the weather app. So the weather app is now um, added. Obviously, you can add your different air, uh, cities, suburbs, whatever. Yeah. But it will automatically add your home and work locations if you have that set within your contact card. Oh, cool. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Um, obviously, us being in Melbourne, Will being in Sydney, and our office being in Sydney, if we have our work address set as Mac Centre in Sydney, yeah. we'll be able to then see that location in the weather and I can – you know, while we're talking on teams and they're whinging about how hot it is, we can actually see how hot it is if we I jump into it. I feel like app. the weather app is... I cool. don't whinge. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the weather app is one of those things that uh, you only really use it when you when you properly need it. Like yeah. you don't really go in there to set it up uh, and customise it uh, yeah. before the fact. It's always kind of like, oh, quick, what's the weather? Yeah, exactly. uh, The fact that it's going to get set up in the background and learning uh, those locations, yep. yeah. Yeah, and I mean, Just even the same easy. as like your mum's house or something like yeah. that as well, if you guys do live a little bit further away. Um, the the next thing I wanted to talk about were the additions to a few of the accessibility features. Mm. Now, I mean, this is something we've already spoken about in WWDC yeah. um, with what they've already um, touched on, but there are some cool additions. So um, now, Will, I know this is one that you've used already. So the vehicle motion cues. So this is focused to reduce motion sickness while um, in a car using animated dots. This can also be used on iPad OS as well. So great for kids in a, in a car. I think, you know, a lot of kids do get motion sickness as well. 
Um, I personally don't get motion sickness, so I haven't tried it. But the idea of it, I think, sounds amazing. So it helps synchronize visual and physical sensations, making it easier to use a device in a moving car. So, yeah. I've, I've been on the train and it's turned on. Yeah. Uh, I usually am okay on trains. Yep. Um, not so great on cars. Yep. Uh, but lately I'm the driver. <laughs> Yeah. So I haven't quite tested that out yet. Uh, I guess it works. Will, thoughts? Yeah, yeah. I've been using it in and around Sydney. Um, it does turn on at the right time. Um, I've been trialing it with the automatic on-off feature. Yeah. Um, so as you start driving, I've got my phone out. Um, and then it's not – I'm not driving, by the way. Don't arrest <laughs> me. Um, as – Elise is driving, my partner's driving. I get my phone out um, and then uh, after like maybe 30 seconds, roughly, mm-hmm. it's realizing that we're driving um, and then it switches it on. And it's basically a matrix of little dots yeah. that go down each side of your screen um, and it moves with the motion of the car in the opposite way. So if your car is turning left, the dots move right um, and that's supposed to help your head to understand where the motion is moving. Mm-hmm. Um, I've worked out that it's best done when your phone is a little bit higher up so if it's in your lap it almost like the dots are moved too quickly um it's a bit better if it's up right i don't tend to get motion sickness um but i have had it before i didn't have it the whole time i've been using that feature so i'm not the best test subject but um, yeah i'm interested to see where that one goes Mm. I think it'll be interesting as well, like, say, for instance, on a plane. I think a lot of people get motion sickness for that, so I'm not sure how that translates across, you know, every kind of vehicle. Yeah. Um, But I don't think this is something that's really come out before, so I think it's really cool. Uh, It's it's interesting how, like, yeah, on one hand, new cameras, new new Mm -hmm. this, new snazzy features, yet they still focus as much, if not if not more, on these on these features to just enhance that experience. So, yeah, yeah kudos. And tying back in with uh, Vision Pro as well, we've mm. got the eye tracking. So the eye tracking now allows users to navigate through the iPhone and iPad interface with only using their eyes. So this uses AI and the front-facing camera to determine where the user's actually looking um, and it can activate buttons, swipes and other gestures. So I've, very similar to I, I turned Vision. it on. And um, I'm not sure if it's made for people with glasses. Uh, it did work well um, for some parts, but I think it might have been my angle. Uh, in I other, think, yeah, in it other, just depends yeah. on the angle yeah. sometimes and I think just yeah. getting used to it. Did you find the it. same thing, Will? Yeah, it works a lot better with my glasses off. Um, mm. And yeah, then turning on the dwell, the dwell control, mm. is it? It's dwell control. So yeah. you stare at something for a period of time and it will then action that. But I mean, going from like using your fingers, uh, especially for for the for the ones um, who use accessibility a lot more, yeah, um, yeah. that that's again, Wild. it's 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 kind of yeah, night and day, like game changing for sure. Yeah, uh, and then another one was the music haptics. So for anyone who is hearing impaired or have you know issues, maybe hearing, um, there is music haptics that are now inv- enabled using the iPhone's Taptic engine um, and it plays taps, textures and refined vibrations um, corresponding with the audio that you're listening to. So a little bit more of an experience for the people who might not be able to fully experience it. Um, The feature works across millions of songs in Apple Music um, and developers can implement this as well in their apps coming forward. Now this isn't available in iPad OS because it doesn't have the same kind of hardware. Um, so it is purely just for um, iOS 18 for iPhones. I'm really excited to see where that one goes, personally speaking. Um, not because it's an accessibility feature that I'm going to use, but more on the developer side. Like, yeah. um, Obviously, sound and speakers, it's just vibration right across a panel. Um, I know that there's a manufacturer in the US that make these panels that you can stick your iPhone to, um, and then they have an app. It translates audio into vibration and then it utilizes the screen to kind of like make that reverberation happen. But I feel like this is more refined version of that. And so I'm kind of interested to see where that goes. Imagine going to a party and someone's forgotten the speaker and you can just stick your iPhone to a like a panel or something and then it just does the music. How cool would that be? Yeah, be well, cool. I'm game. Yeah. 
So, yeah, it will be interesting to see, yeah, how it goes across the party apps and if they implement it as well, you know, within the gaming sort of apps as well, I would yeah, have thought. Yeah, true, true. Um, I think so that sound would, in general, not just music. Yeah, yeah and not yeah. just for people who need it, you know, in an actual hearing sense, but just as an experience too, I think. Mm. will be quite interesting. Yeah.